Oh, yeah. Okay, let me just do a quick check in my Facebook Live. All right. Okay, it should be live by now. Hello, parents. Good morning. And today we have a special guest, and this is Coach John from Learning Out of the Box. And thanks so much for being here. So as mentioned, uh, today we have a special guest, and her name is Father Lim, the CEO and co-founder of Lunch, actually. And today we are going to talk about intentional parenting, how to journey alongside children in their formative years. Hello, Father. Hey, hello. Hi, John. So good to be here with you. Yes, thanks so much for your time because I know that you are a very busy person. And you are oh, don't just... say that. Don't say that. I mean, like, really uh, honored uh, to, to be on your show and to share with your parents as well. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yes. Uh, and I have known you for many years. And in fact, I have a surprise for you. I'm not sure oh, if wow. you remember this book. Um, but I can't give you a lot because this is my only book. <laughs> It's my only book, <laughs> and you realize that it's still shrink wrap, yeah. Ta da! <laughs> wow! It's still shrink wrap, so awesome. yeah. Yeah because, yeah. One, yeah, because it's going to cost a lot. One, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I can protect it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so um, would, would, would you be able to share with us some backstory and how, and then probably you can lead on from there to talk about um, how you parent your own children in your, mm -hmm. in your uh, life? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, very quickly, like um, I actually met my um, then boyfriend, now husband <laughs> at a university because I guess when people hear about what I do, you know, like their first question to me is always like, oh, so did you meet your husband in your dating service? Yeah, so the answer is no because uh, we met at university uh, at Manchester. So uh, he was studying accounting and finance and I was doing mm. law and um, I was then Malaysian, then um, he's Singaporean. So uh, yeah, that's how I ended up in Singapore, you know. Um, and um, how we started the business then was because I was working in a bank and I saw that a lot of my colleagues were single and not dating. And I was thinking to myself, hey, you know, how come that's the case? Because, you know, like bankers being bankers, usually they are very, um, you know, well-spoken, they are eligible, they are attractive. So I was quite puzzled. Um, at the same time, I have quite a lot of friends who were getting married and engaged at the same time. And I realized it's like, um, they are like me. La. They also met their other half at school, at university. So, you know, I realized that if you kind of miss that opportunity of meeting someone you know when you're studying it gets increasingly more difficult and that was the reason why you know at uh, 24 uh, I decided to quit my job uh, and started lunch actually with uh, Jamie yes so that's our backstory yes thanks thanks uh, so much for sharing and I know that you have two wonderful kids and I've met one of them uh, yes uh, Corum and when I met him I was really impressed by him uh, because on the second day when he came for my math workshop during break time, he doesn't want to play, but he's mm. reading a very team, very team, uh, complicated book that I was like blown away, and it looks like this. <laughs> to do with the what US constituency, yeah. So on that spot, I was wondering, well, so how did the parents bring up this child to to reach where he was and um, where he is to reach to read such advanced books? Yeah. So I want to know your parenting style, yeah. Okay, so um, I think maybe we focus a bit on this uh, reading. La. So um, Coram, he actually read um, maybe a bit later than his peers. I mean, not too late, but maybe a bit later because I think, you know, in Singapore, like we're all very kiasu. I know we send our kids for I Can Read and, you know, also different programs, right? So, um, I mean, we didn't. So um, I think he, he uh, was reading a bit later than maybe where I wanted him to. But uh, once he found a subject that he was interested in, like that was the reason why he learned how to read. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think boys, you know, like, especially at that age, um, they are all very interested in dinosaurs. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> so, you know, like, he, he's, like, you know, watching all these uh, dinosaur shows, you know, on, um, on TV, and then he wanted to get all these different books from the bookstores about dinosaurs. And that was actually what prompted him to learn how to read. And once he learned how to read, it's like, you know, we couldn't stop him. La. Like, I mean, I still have so many of these dinosaur books, which I just recently gave to a friend who has a, a son who is about that age. And um, it is really very uh, hardcore, you know, it's not like the 
the very simple ones, you know, like it's it's really like the encyclopedia type, right? And um, and since then, basically, we have been very encouraging of um, his reading habits or even uh, Kara's reading habits as well. So in our family, it's like you want to buy books anytime. Yeah, you know, like we we are very, very generous on books. So in fact, like uh, yesterday, uh, Kara said that she wanted to go to the bookshop uh, and we're like, okay, you know, like let's let's make it a night out, you know, let's go and have uh, dinner outside and then let's go to the bookshop to buy books. So um, if it's toys, then that's another story altogether. You know, they need to work for it. <laughs> but for books, anytime we will just buy them books. Um, and we don't really stop them from uh, reading whatever they want. Yeah, so, you know, we, we won't say like, oh, you know, is this too difficult for you or is this too advanced for you? So um, for, from a young age, like Coram, his, his interest is very much into like history. He's very much into like um, um, very intellectual sort of uh, 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 subjects, like, which is why I think you, you saw him reading the US Constitution. <laughs> Because, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because when I was um traveling, I, I think I was at Barnes and Nobles or something. I think in the uh, US, I can't remember. You know, a couple of years ago, and then I saw it and I thought he would really like it. Yeah. <laughs> because so so I decided to to get it for him. Yeah. And uh, like for example, he has read like uh Jared Diamond, like uh Gun Steals, and I can't remember what was that book called. So my my husband is very into it. You know, Jamie is very into it, and then uh, Coram is very into it as well. And currently, he's reading another very thick book that uh I have no idea what it is about. But like I say, whatever he wants to read, whatever he wants to get, we we just encourage it. When when you say thick, how how thick it is? Because when you say thick. The thickest book that I've seen is Harry Potter's book, but I don't think your child is reading that kind of level. He's his way high, higher. <laughs> um, I, I mean, maybe it's not as thick <laughs> as Harry Potter, but you know, it's like he's reading very, um, very yeah. deep, very adult, very intellectual sort of uh, subjects. Lah. But I think we go with the child's interest as well. So for uh, Kara, it's different. Like Kara is not interested in that subject. So at the same time, we don't force her. We don't say, oh, you know, Coco is reading these books. You need to read these books as well. Yeah, so we, we let them, I would say, develop according to their interests and, you know, what, what, what they like. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And I also want to share a bit uh, because I know that kids uh, pick up the, the, the reading from the parents. So yes. I want to find a bit more. Uh, so how, how were your children growing up years like? And you, mm. and I, and you mentioned about intentional parenting, and I believe that yes, yes. there are a lot of things that you consciously do every single day, every single moment to instill good values in your kids. Yes, yes, yeah. So, uh, thanks for that question. I think maybe very quickly. I think uh, one of the things that you you have shared with me earlier, because you know, like I really thank you for sharing with, with me in advance all the talking points, right? I think one of the questions you asked is uh, my own growing up years as well. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So I agree that definitely, you know, how we are brought up, it would uh, impact our own parenting styles. I mean, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively, but but it would impact. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would say the way that I'm parenting my children, um, is quite similar to how I have been brought up. So uh, I'm actually an only child uh, and my parents had me uh, quite quite late in life. Lah. Yeah, because um, I mean, they got married uh, quite late. So um, they, they are very um, encouraging. Like uh, same thing, you know, I love to read and uh, every week my parents will buy me a book. So same thing, lah, you know, they're very generous when it comes to books. Um, and they, they are also, I would say, you know, very open to uh, reason with me. So like, for example, like um, they won't say no, they won't just say no, but they will say, why do you want this thing? Or why do you want this? Uh, wow. Why do you want to do this? So it's, it's really up to me to uh, explain to them or convince them. Lah. And uh, from a very young age, um, I've also been given a certain level of uh, independence as well. Yeah. Um, so for example, when I was 11, um, my parents uh, allowed me to travel on my own to visit my aunt in Canada. So it was quite awesome. Like, I mean, I, I took a plane from Malaysia and, you know, transited in London and then uh, flew to, to Canada on my own. I mean, of course, you know, like there will be someone to kind of guide you along all the processes. But there was really a point where during transit, they just left me on my own in the airport for six hours, right? They give me 20 pounds and say, just go get whatever you want, sit here and then we'll come back and get you, you know, whenever. Um, that entire experience was um, very eye-opening and transformation, uh, transformational for me. 
like I think since then I I was kind of like wow you know this is so cool you know it's like I I really can do a lot of things you know I really see things from a different way you know like exposed to different culture, and that was actually one thing that I wanted for my kids. So um since I became a parent right I like okay when my kids are eleven they are going to go on this trip, <laughs> so. So uh, when Corum turned 11, um, uh, uh, again, very fortunately, we have a family in Australia and then they were happy for him to visit. So uh, he flew on his own to Melbourne wow. uh, to, to visit them. And that has been uh, so confidence boosting for him. Like, you know, when he came back, I would say, you know, he's kind of like a different child. Like, mm. you know, he's so much more confident. Like, um, it's it's just so different. Like, you know, I think he knowing that, oh, I can actually do these things on my own. You know, I went there, I meet new people. I ex- um, I, I, I just learned different things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Kara is 11 this year with the COVID situation. Oh. Um, you know, we might need to delay, you know, her right of uh, passage, you know, maybe a, a year mm. later. Yeah, so I would say definitely my own um, parents, you know, like how I've been brought up definitely have... Um, Mm, a lot of influence on, on how I am parenting. So um, you mentioned uh, intentional parenting. Yeah, so uh, what, what do I mean by that? So I, I believe very much uh, in life by design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I mean, of course, um, you know, things will happen along the way and, you know, like uh, things happen to us and circumstances change and things like that. But I believe very much that um, we can actually... Um, plan ahead, you know, like have a very clear idea of what we want and then work backwards from there. So uh, similarly with uh, my children or when it comes to parenting, so questions that I ask myself would be like, for example, what sort of family do I want in the future? So what I do, what do I mean by that? So for example, like when the kids are adults, you know, like how would I want that interaction to be? You know, uh, how would I want the living arrangements to be, for example? Like, do I want my kids to live with me? You know, like, is that possible? How, if, if that's what I want, how do I make it happen? Or for example, like how close do I want to be with my kids and their family in future? Mm-hmm. Um, do, and how close do I want them to be with each other as well? Um, like, um, because I, I think, you know, like we are not here forever, right? Obviously, we are going to pass on uh, before our kids or at least as parents, that's what we hope. You know, we want them to live a long life, right? Mm-hmm. So um, when we are gone, you know, we don't want them to just stay together or be close to each other just for us to see, you know what I mean? We want to make sure even when we are gone, you know, they are going to be very close to each other, right? So this is something uh, that, that I have in mind. Uh, or even like what sort of person do I want my kids to be when they grow up? And uh, going one step further, maybe because of the industry that I'm in, what sort of spouse do I want my kids to have? Yep. So, <laughs> so th- these are uh, questions that, you know, like I've thought about that, that I put uh, some thinking to it. And of course, the outcome that I want to have as well. Mm-hmm. And as a result, I kind of work backwards from there. Mm. Yeah. So, so, for example, like uh, what, what kind of values do I want them to have? So, um, I, I actually grew up um, uh, in a kindergarten, uh, which is a church kindergarten, which is mm-hmm. quite interesting because my parents are not Christians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but somehow why I ended up there is because they just needed to find a place that can take me in from nine to five every day because they are both very very busy at that time. Mm. You know, really do, uh, doing very uh, working very hard to make a living. Yeah, so um, the only place they could find is this uh, church kindergarten, <laughs> and mm. and there's the reason why I grew up with like uh, godly values. Mm-hmm. So um, when Jamie and I got married, and then when we have quorum, actually at that time we were not church going, even though you know we are both Christians, we believe in God, but we are not church going so i wanted uh, my kids to grow up with um uh godly values so actually uh, that was the reason why we went back to church because we were thinking like you know we cannot just send our kids uh to sunday school and not go ourselves right wow. so so things like that just making such decisions or for example like a selection of spouse <laughs> so so from a very young age you know like i'm already talking to them about like what to look out for what's important you know what are significant criteria what are superficial criteria i, I mean it sounds a bit crazy maybe it's like you know people might be thinking they're so young but but i believe that um you know choosing the right spouse is the most most decision, most important decision that a person can make in their life. So, uh, that so th- this is something that um something we talk about very regularly in our household, um and sibling love. So um this is again something very intentional. Like um I always make sure that they have a close relationship, and in fact I encourage that closeness. So if you were to ask both of them who's the who's their favorite person in the world, they will tell you it's each other. Wow, that sounds so lovely. 
Yeah. Yes, and I also want to ask a quick question because I know that uh, you have two children and I also yes. am a father of three three girls yes. and and it's a moment that they fight, a moment that they love each other. So yes, in your yes. daily life, so how, so, okay, I want to ask, so when they have conflicts or this, this disagreement, how do you manage that if you see that? Okay, so I, I think um, what I've learned is the best way is I just let them deal with it. Yeah, so so because, you know, if not, like this person will say that person's fault, that person will say that person's fault, and then we were not there to see whose person's fault is it, right? Unless we have a CCTV and then we go and rewind it or something. So so the way I do it is like, okay, we, we don't know what happened, you know, it's like you guys talk it out and then come back to us and let us know. Because if not, we'll just punish both of you. <laughs> so, oh. so yeah, so, so they, they learn to like work with each other. So in, in fact, I mean, now that they are older, um, they don't have um, that many disagreements mm. that will end up in tears or, or in, in them, like, you know, like bow towing to us. La. You know, I mean, of course, when they are younger, you know, that, there's more of that. So also same thing, you know, we will tell them that uh, telling tales, you know, is not good. It doesn't work. You know, we, we are not going to act on this kind of things. So I think eventually as they grow up now, they realize that I have no point going to them. La, you know, just end up in the same space, you know. So, so they, they just work it out they they you know negotiate with each other and and just work with it and in fact now they they have come to a very good uh, working partnership <laughs> so mm. so for example it's like um kara uh, quorum knows that whatever he wants he just need to convince kara to want it and they will end up having it oh that's a very smart and strategic move <laughs> Because uh, he knows that Kara is like the salesperson, you know, she is very convincing. She, she, she knows, you know, like when to do the selling, which, which I mean, which brings me to another point. Lah. So I think, of course, when we watch them grow up, you know, we, we also see, you know, what are their characteristics, what are their personality traits and things like that. So um, one thing I also have learned is um, not to say no too quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when like, for example, they come to us with requests or with like their wants, right? Like, I mean, it's very easy to just say no, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I want to buy this or I want to uh, do this, then no, right? So what I've learned is that rather than giving a hard no, I'll say, mm -hmm. I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'll just see how many times she come back to me. Ah. And I'll see how creative she comes back to me. Because I, I realized that um actually, you know, all of us, you know, we have this, this uh, ability to, to think differently, to, you know, like uh, think out of the box, you know, which now I'm looking at your learning out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, think, I think we all have that, but sometimes it's because, you know, that we are just being rejected all the time. We just keep getting shut down all the time. And after a while, we just don't ask anymore. You know, we are just like, why bother? Because, you know, it's not going to work. Yeah, so so I, I just give her the opportunity to just come back. So I'll I'll let her come back. Like if she comes back like maybe more than six times, maybe I won't give her exactly what she wants, but I'll reward her with something. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I want to reward her for her resilience and just her, you know, never say die attitude of just keep asking and keep asking and keep asking. Wow. It's it it, it and it really sounds intentional. Yeah, yeah at the same time, I and I and I know that it also requires a lot of your energy and 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 focus, which is also what I want to ask you. Like, uh, yes, I know that you have been doing all this since they were, since they were born. So yes. how do you keep up with the energy? Because every day I see you, uh, you're always so smiley, and I love your purple. <laughs> your purple makes you very bright and energetic. So how? <laughs> Thank you. And how do you actually find the balance? And I know that you also have to run your 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 team and companies. So how do you do that on a daily basis? Okay, so I think that is a very good question and I'll answer it from the last word you use, which is a daily basis. Yeah. The truth is I don't do it on a daily basis. And I think that's where a lot of us fail because we feel that we need to do it on a daily basis. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, the way that I have, um, I would say, organized my life or organized my time, right, is there are certain things that need to be done on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but there are certain things that can be done on a weekly basis. There are certain things that can be done on a monthly basis, or maybe there are even certain things that can be done on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, so I think, you know, like again, like working backwards. So, you know, like having a very clear intention of what we are trying to achieve and then work backwards on all the different things or different tasks. So mm. things that have to be done on a daily basis, of course, we do it on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, I think again, you know, you have asked me, I travel so much. I mean, of course, now I can't. But in the past, I travel so frequently. In fact, you know, Corum has uh, counted, you know, like one day he told me, he said, mommy, you know, you travel every nine days. I'm like, Wow. <laughs> I, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So so it's like um they, they know. So actually kids, right, they notice everything. So I think that's another thing as parents we, we need to be very aware of. You know, they, they really notice everything. So um like for example, like okay, daily basis would be like maybe daily check-ins, either even when I'm away, I'm able to just drop them a message or you know, drop them a voice recording or have a video call with them. So, you know, daily check-ins. But uh, on a weekly basis, you know, we, we can do different things. You know, like, um, so for, for my kids and even uh, for my uh, husband as well, so we have um, what we call a one-to-one dates. Mm. So, you know, of course, you know, on a weekly basis, we always go out as a family for a meal. So that's something we do as a family. But at, uh, on a monthly basis, you know, like I have a one-to-one date with just Coram. I have a one-to-one date with just Kara. I have a one-to-one date with uh, Jamie. Uh, in fact, actually, Jamie and I have more than just once a month. But anyway, and, and the same thing for uh, Jamie, he does that as well. He also have a one-to-one date with uh, Kara. He has a one-to-one date with Coram. So this is where, you know, like, um, it's very uh, catered to what they like to do. So mm-hmm. for, uh, for Jamie, what he does with Corum is they'll play board games together because they both love board games. Uh. Yep. So uh, that's what they do. So for Kara, you know, what he usually does with her is like, uh, because um, Kara's love language is gift. Yeah, so, so I think just very quickly, I want to cover like the five love languages because it has been, you know, amazing. Uh-huh. It has done so well, you know, not just for spouses, you know, but even for kids as well. So because we all express our love in a different way. So, you know, it's like um, how we uh, express our love um, and how we receive love might be different from our spouse and our kids as well. So, for example, like my uh, love language is uh, words of affirmation. But mm. for like uh, Corum, his uh, love language is actually a uh, touch and quality time. And for Kara, her love language is gift followed by words of affirmation. And for mm. Jamie, it's a uh, touch and quality time. So by understanding um, each other's love language, right, we can um, provide that during the date, the date day. Mm. Yep. So, so that's like uh, what we do on a monthly basis. And on an annual basis, I actually do like mothers and son trip, mother and daughter trip. So it's just uh, me and one of them. So wow. for example, like um, I, um, and, and how I do it is like sometimes I work trips, right? Like I have to go to KL for like maybe two days. Mm. Then, you know, it's during school holiday. Then I'll just bring Corum with me, for example. Like, or like um, when um, I have to go to Hong Kong for a work trip again, then I just bring Kara with me, you know, for a couple of days. And then the last day, which would be her favorite because we'll go to Disneyland. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I think like um, my, what I'm just trying to say is that um, I understand on a day-to-day basis, so many things are happening. You know, we need to deal with work. We need to deal with like just the day-to-day tasks, right? But mm. um, we don't need to uh, do everything on a day-to-day basis. Mm. Wow, that's, that's, that's a great sharing. Yes, uh, and a few questions that I, wanna, I, I, and I wanna ask you because when I work with, with parents, I can definitely hear some of them say, sorry, uh, yes, these are great ideas, but I simply have no time. And, and mm-hmm. if I bring one out, the other one is gonna say that it's not fair. So mm. h- how, what, what, what kind of tips you can give to the parents for such yeah. uh, scenarios? So um, we, we have uh, what we call family meetings. So wow, that's um, serious stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's so serious. Yeah, so family meeting. <laughs> so um, so on an like, uh, annual basis, you know, like we set family goals. So um, like we will have like um, uh, everybody will share what they want to do for the year. And uh, actually, we also started this new routine. Like maybe about two years ago, we have started where everybody will also share what they expect of someone else. So like part of my family goals, right? As in part of my personal goals for the family would be things that, you know, Jamie say that he expect more of me, you know, as a family member, how I'm playing my role. Uh, Corum will also share what he expect uh, out of me. Kara will also share what she expect out of me. And same thing, I'll also share with Corum, I'll share with Kara, I'll share with Jamie. So it's very transparent. So in a way, uh, we will say that, oh, you know, we, we don't like that uh, this is happening. We prefer if 
this could be happening. So same thing when we are doing the family goal setting, we also talk about like plans, you know, like we talk about, okay, uh, what do we want to do for our holiday this year? You know, we talk about, you know, how are we going to go about having all these uh, date days? So I think, you know, setting the expectation and setting um, everybody's, uh, what, what they know is going to happen. So for example, like you say, you know, Excuse me. So like the kid might say like, hey, how come you go out with Jia today? You know, what about me? But because everybody already know that this is going to happen. So it's just, uh, it's either going to happen for you is on the first week, you know, maybe for Jia Jia it's on the second week, you know, for Mei Mei it's on the third week, for example. So they know it's fair because it's not just that you're just taking out Jia Jia this time and I don't get a chance. So like, for example, when I go on a date day with Coram, like Kara is like, okay, bye guys, have fun. Because she knows that hers is going to be, you know, another weekend. And when you talk about the goals, uh, do you write them on somewhere and then pin them out so that everybody is clear and there's transparency at home? Yes, yes. So um, we we do get them to write down their goals. So they will write down their own goals. Uh, at the same time, I... I... Uh, I'm a very uh, what do you call it OCD kind of person I, I love planning organizing you know it's like I, I tell people that's like my hobby so anyway uh, I use Trello uh, Trello has been very uh, helpful so uh, it's uh, spelled T-R-E-L-L-O uh, it's free as well so you know for parents who are listening out there um, I highly recommend this tool like uh, Trello can be used for a lot of different things I use it at work I use it for my personal planning you know I use it for the family uh, you know like goals planning as well and uh, we'll revisit it so you know like um, every quarter we will bring it back out and say hey you know so this is our goal that we set for the end of the year how are we doing right now you know like we have check-ins uh, and then for example things that people have expected of me right then I also uh, will say okay so how do you think I'm doing you know am I improving am I getting better so so we, we are quite open and we the way we talk to our kids we have always talked to them not as kids la. we don't talk down on them Mm. Like even from a very young age, um, we talk to them as equals. So um, so similarly, um, another thing that I'm very open to doing. So I, I don't believe that, you know, as a parent or as a mother, I'm always right and I can never be wrong. So I don't believe in that. Uh, in fact, you know, like um, if I raise my voice, uh, if I uh, lose my temper, uh, I mean, of course, you know, uh, there are times where uh, because they misbehave and all these things, you know, like they will expect that it happens. But if it's, like of no fault of them, right? It's just because I couldn't control uh, my own uh, emotions mm. and uh, I lash out at them, I will actually apologize. So I, I am very open uh, to apologizing and, you know, I have no qualms about doing that. Nice, nice. Yes, yeah. uh, thanks, thanks for sharing that because I, th and I think that that takes conscious eff effort uh, on your side as yes. well. Yes. Yes. I want to also ask more about um, the goal setting because it's one of the skills that I think I see very, uh, very clear in your family. What are the yes. other type of skills that 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 you are consciously spend playing for your kids, such that they pick up all these skills in your, in their growing up years? Okay. Um. So. The interesting thing is that um, Jamie and I are very different type of students when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Tell us more about so, that. <laughs> yeah, so um, I am like so-called like the A student, like A star student, which, you know, like parents love, uh, 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 teachers love. So, you know, like I'm like the teacher's pet and things like that. Um, I don't think it's like I'm smarter or like more intelligent or things like that. I think it's just that um, the way that the school teaches it's uh, very similar to my learning style. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm the type of student that I can learn by, you know, you can just go on a monologue, just keep talking and talking, you know, and I just keep copying notes and then you just give me tons of homework and I just finish my homework and I can get A's, you know. So what they are trying to do and how I learn it, it works well. But mm -hmm. I believe that not every child learns the same. You know, in fact, you know, there are some child that's more like um, kinesthetic. They need to do things. You know, there are some child that's like, you know, they, they work more visually, you know, verbally. So different learning style, right? So uh, for Jamie, um, he is like the student that when the teacher come in, then just ask him to go out. But... <laughs> really? It doesn't look like that. And I thought he's the so... psycho type. Okay, so so the reason why the teacher asked him to go out is not because he's not quiet. It's just he doesn't hand up his homework. He's oh. like daydreaming all the time. Yeah, so, so, you know, so we are very different type of student. And in fact, like, I think he was failing like most of his uh, subjects most of the time. But, you know, it will be at the last crucial time that he sort of like wake up a bit and then, you know, oh. do enough to pass. Yeah, but, but ultimately, you know, eventually we both ended up being a university graduate. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, both of us uh, got two ones last second upper, right? So, mm. and, and both of us also ended up, uh, you know, running a business together. So I think it's because of this experience that um, we are of the opinion that um, it's okay if they are not scoring straight A's in school. Mm. Yeah. So I think, you know, if they, they are, they are naturally doing it, you know, like um, they are not, you know, having us to really put so much pressure on them to make it until like their childhood is like hell, right? Then of course, that's fine. You know, we are very encouraging of that. But if, you know, it's going to take so much out of them and so much out of us just for them to score straight A's, we just feel that it might not make sense. Because, you know, like the childhood is, is just um, that, that many years, right? And I think a lot of parents also, especially the ones that have older children, you also realize that eventually they're going to leave the nest, right? And then you're going to have an empty nest. And that happens much faster than we, we actually think. Because like, for example, Corum is already 14. Yes, that's and so then fast. It, wow. Yeah, so fast, right? And you know, in a couple of years' time, he's going to the army. In a couple of and after that, he'll be going to uni, and who knows what's going to happen after that. So we really enjoy our children, and uh, we really want to, you know, like um, grow up with them, la, and not just every waking moment just spending time like scolding them or like making sure they finish homework, things like that. So uh, I mean, uh, on that basis, la, So. Our focus is very much like how can we help them to grow up to be, um, you know, like a person, you know, with good values and at the same time to be a contributing uh, global citizen. Yep. And I think from there, you know, we have come up with uh, different skill sets or different um, knowledge that we feel is important. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, you, you have uh, talked about some of it just now, like goal setting, like uh, we feel uh, money management is important. Mm -hmm. Um, emotional management, you know, EQ. So we focus a lot on like this. Uh, social skills as well, uh, public speaking skills. Mm. So um, these are the things that we realize are very important uh, when you come out to society, when you come out to work. So of course, you know, some people, they are more natural in certain things, but certain things they are maybe not as uh, natural in. So we will uh, just nudge them in the right direction or provide them with the right exposure or the right training uh, when necessary. When, when you say not them in the right uh, direction and, and training, and I guess in most parents' mind is, oh, I have to, since I heard from Violet, I have to send my kid to tuition, more more tuition <laughs> and more enrichment. And I believe that for your style, it was, it's going to be a bit different. Would you be able to share yes. what do you mean by training and nudging in the right direction? Okay. Um, so I, I, I mean, the truth is um, yeah. classes is not a bad thing because actually when I was growing up, I, I attend a lot of classes and um, I attend a lot of classes not because my parents wanted me to, it's because I wanted to. So I'm actually the, the person calling up all the centers and find out more information. And then after that, I will tell my parents, okay, this one I want to attend, just pay. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So, so I, I think that's what I'm trying to say is that um, it needs to be uh, something that the kids want as well. La. Because I think when the kids doesn't want it, then it, it just gets a, a struggle. Yeah. Mm. So um, classes is, is not a bad idea. Uh, but at the same time, I think really in real life experiences. So, so for example, from a very young age, like um, we would um, ask the kids to go and order food themselves, like mm. in McDonald's, for example. Because this gives them, help them to build that confidence, to be able to talk to a stranger, to be able to you know like get their uh, needs across like um and i mentioned to you also like uh, when um uh, they are 11 you know i send them to uh take that trip right so again it's just different experiences to to help them to develop uh, such a skill set so uh for public speaking um as well so again you know seeing what other opportunities they they have the opportunity to speak so even when uh, we meet up with our friends like um my expectation of them is that to be on the same table as us and to make conversation with our friends as well and not just you know either just don't say anything or, or or things like that so i i think like um i i am quite strict about certain things lah. so because sometimes we do see you know now kids uh, they're growing up you know teenagers as well sometimes they i mean all teenagers go through a rebellious age i think we we as teenagers went yes. through that as well uh but i think with my kids um jamie and i we make it very clear from a young age like what is acceptable and what's not acceptable lah. so like um like Talking back uh, is not acceptable. So uh, very uh, uh, early on, like for example, when um, they are like maybe five or six. So for example, like I call them, right? Like maybe I call them something like, hey, Coram, you know, like, oh, Kara. So at one point they started, will we'll answer me with what? 
Like what? You know, I, I think it's quite normal. You know, if you yep. even yep. hear you, now you hear people say that. So to me, right, answering with what, I feel is very rude and disrespectful. Lah, which mm. I don't think that was uh, what they intend to do. Yeah, it, it's just something just so natural, you know, as, as they're growing up. So I retrain them. I, I won't answer. I say, if you are going to say what, right, I, I won't uh, reply to you. So I retrain them, right? When I call them, right? Their reply is, yes, mommy. Wow. Yes, mommy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, daddy. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes, mommy. Yes, daddy. So so it's just uh, subtle things like that. So even like now that they are growing up, of course, you know, like Coram is now 14. He has his angst and, you know, teenage angst and things like that. It's, it's very natural. But yes. he knows like what is the line. He knows like he cannot cross that line because if he crossed that line, we will go very hard on it. Mm. Yeah. So so I think one of the things you asked earlier, which I think I didn't manage to answer, was, was the parenting style. So I, I think, you know, like if we just do a quick research, there are four different parenting styles like, that people kind of agree on. So uh, the four are author, authoritarian, authoritative, uh, permissive, and uninvolved. So mm. basically how that four styles come about is that, you know, like it's on a spectrum, right? So uh, on one side of the spectrum is demanding versus not demanding. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the spectrum is supportive un uh, versus unsupportive. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if uh, authoritarian, basically, it means that demanding, but not supportive or not warm. Yeah. And then uh, authoritative means um, you are demanding, but you are supportive and you're warm, right? Permissive is you are supportive and you're warm, but you're not demanding. Mm. And then, you know, uh, uninvolved basically just means you're not demanding and you're also not warm, la, which I believe, you know, most parents are not. Yeah, so so that's why you know like um demanding you know which is um like I say, a very clear guidelines la, on what it's allowed, what is not allowed, you know what uh we can accept, what we cannot accept. But at the same time, you know like we are very encouraging. You know we always discuss options with them. Uh, we foster like uh independence and reasoning. You know like what I shared just now, like how I uh, what I got when I was growing up as well. And also we do administer discipline la, when things um are not followed through. When 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 you say administer discipline, could you give us some examples? Because I think as a parent myself, I'm also trying to learn. And you know, as a dad, sometimes we are pretty soft on our girls. Like yes, yes. Five, <laughs> is, are you okay, 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 okay? You know, like sometimes I also got trapped by them, <laughs> trapped by their smell and their tears. Yes, yes. Yeah, so yes. You share with us, and I really, I really want to learn from you how 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 you discipline your kids. Yeah, I, I think you brought up a very good point and it's the same with uh, Jamie as well. It's like, you know, I always say like Kara has him around her little finger, you know. So I, I guess I guess that's where the mom comes in. La. So so he knows that if he's going to give in, right, like he won't and he'll just say, okay, go and talk to your mom. And then he will know that, you know, I will uh, uh, do the right things. La. So uh, I think another question that you have asked as well, right, which is, you know, what happens when the kids become very manipulative, right? They kind of know that, oh, you know, like uh, they know the loophole, they know who to ask and things like that. So um, I, I think, you know, for Jamie and I, what we do is we are very clear on um, the uh, what we are trying to achieve. So, you know, we, we do discuss, we talk about it and we are very aligned la, and we are on the same page. So if we are not aligned on certain things, you know, we don't disagree in front of them. You know, we, we disagree behind closed doors la, and then we talk it out. And then at least, you know, we always, um, we have a united front. La. Like, okay. uh, Yes, so they, they know that they cannot just play us out. Like, I mean, of course, Jamie, sometimes he does, you know, like uh, give a bit more, like let's say, you know, she really wants something and then she nye, 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 then maybe uh, he might get for her. You know, those kind of things, you know, I'm sure it, it happens. Like, but it's just that when they do something wrong, like we will stand our ground. Like, you know, it, they, they cannot just wiggle their, their way out of it. Like, yeah. yeah, so uh, when you say stand your ground, so what are the different ways of, of, of punishment? That, that, mm, okay. That, that, so, so I think, you know, when they are younger, you know, like then there's like, like so-called naughty corner, that sort of thing, right? Like uh, time out, you know, naughty corner. So just ask them to uh, stand there, you know, to just reflect on what they have done, you know. And then also when they say sorry to, uh, it, it needs to be a proper sorry. La. It's not like, I'm sorry, you know, like, uh, it's like, why, why are you sorry? What are you sorry for? So making it very clear that they have to articulate it so that they, they know, you know, what, what they are being punished for when, when they are younger. Um, of course, when they are older, then um, it would be like maybe taking away certain uh, uh, rights that they have, 
you know, like maybe uh, how much time they have on their phone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, things like that. La. Yeah, so um, as they grow older, then we have to adjust uh, things accordingly. So for, for us, we, we don't use the cane. La. So mm -hmm. um, I... I, I don't have very strong uh, pros and against views on this, honestly. You know, like I, I believe that, uh, that there is a place for it as well. So it really depends on the family. Like, but for us, uh, we, we, we don't. Uh, yeah. mm. when, you, when you talk about the, the like, uh, there are, and there are times that dad actually give, give in more. So like as a mom and when you see, so what are some of the tips that you can give to us? What are the, how, how do we respond in the right way? in the appropriate way? Mm. Um, I, I think like when I say give in more, like I would say it's really more on like uh, buying things, but okay. uh, not on the punishment. La. So I think that needs to be very clear. So uh, my, my advice is that for, you know, husband and wife to really uh, come to a, um, a landing on you know what sort of discipline measures to be take to be taken. So I mean of course sometimes like a uh, one party is uh, more um, how to say, uh, feel it's easier to maybe meet out some of this dis disciplinary mm -hmm. measure, right? Mm -hmm. Then just let that party do it, law. You know, it's like the other one that always very sing one and then we'll just kind of shy away from it. Then just don't get involved. I mean, that's, that's one way. But of course, the challenge with that sometimes is then they'll end up be, uh, they'll end up have a parent being the bad cop, lah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I feel is not so fair as well. So mm -hmm. I think for, for us, uh, I mean, how we do it might not always might not be the best way, but how we do it is we, we kind of take turns. Lah. We don't always just make one person the, the bad person because I think it's not, the, the, it's not fair to that person as well. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes. and, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm sure that uh, there are many parents who are watching this and probably their kids are older, like maybe primary four and above. And maybe for the, when their children are younger, they may not have all these rules. So yes. uh, I guess that some of them may want to try, So, but they may find it hard. So what are some of the great ways to start off for mm. them? Okay. So I think uh, maybe just sharing from my personal experience. So um, when they were younger, we, um, we, we actually allow quite a lot of uh, screen time when they were younger because I think like a lot of parents out there, right? It's just so much easier. You know what I mean? Like yes, if they, you need to entertain them. It's so easier to just pass them a device and, and entertain them. But at some point we realized that it was getting a bit out of hand now. And mm -hmm. it is really um, getting uh, not very healthy and things like that. So uh, we, we just take it back. Long, as in like we, we just um, then create very clear uh, guidelines of when they can use it, uh, when they cannot use it. So for example, like for meal times, and it's actually um, a discipline on ourselves as parents as well. Because I think now, right, like we can't like um, be separated from our phone, right? It, sometimes it's not even you need to check. Like, sorry. So it's just kind of become a habit. You know, like every few minutes, then you just check w whether there's a notification or not. It's like kind of a habit. So that's, it's also uh, on us. So like, for example, how we started, we just say that, okay, um, no uh, devices uh, on the dining table. So they also like uh, feel it very fun that to catch us lah. So they also say, hey, mommy, you know, you say no uh, devices, you know, daddy, you say no devices. So, so that's kind of fun, right? So like they, they kind of catch us as well. So it, it applies across board, not just to them, but to us as well. And then um, like um, we will uh, use uh, the technology, which is good, like, you know, now with screen time, you know, like for uh, phones, you know, you're able to control it as well. So they will know that, okay, there's a certain time limit that they can use and they have to learn to... Um, balance that time la, because they know that okay if i'm going to use it for this then i'll have less time for that mm. yeah because once they're out of time then they're out of time la. i mean sometimes you know if they finish their work you know like then they ask for a bit more extra time then we'll give them la. so so i think it's just um sometimes going cold turkey la. I, I i think there's no uh perfect answer i think what, mm -hmm. what we have done is just that once we have decided that okay you know like yes we have gone down this very permissive route uh, on this matter for a while but now we realize that okay this uh, doesn't work anymore then you know uh, we need to know why we are making that decision and i think if we are all aligned knowing that this is important for our family and we need to make this decision then we just have to follow through law i mean it's not easy of course because we are also used to doing a certain way right yeah. so i think same thing like um when we talk about building habits like i mean some sometimes people say okay you need to do it like 21 days to build a habit but i think research has, has also shown maybe it's it needs to be even a longer time mm -hmm. so so i think just just keeping at it and i think the other thing is 
don't beat yourself up if you fail. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I think that's also important because the, the truth of the matter is like, you know, we are all trying, like, you know, there are so many different things that are happening right now. I think for parents out there now, you know, we also need to work from home, you know, like uh, the economy is not doing so well, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. So I think the last thing you need is just another stress. Lah. So I my advice is just to take baby steps. You know, it's like um, better to do uh, take baby steps and, and go with it rather than think that you need to do this humongous, you know, crazy plans. And then when it, it fails, and then you feel really bad about it. Wonderful. Yes, at the same time, um, because I also heard from some parents that they find it so hard to take away the mobile devices. So was, was, this a, was there a time that your kids resisted to your action? And how, yes, yes, of and, course. And how, how do you deal with it? Yeah, so it, it's definitely, it's never easy. Like, like I say, you know, like um, once people have something, it's so much harder to take it away from them, right? It's, it's much easier if we just don't give to them in the first place, but <laughs> it's, it's just done and over with. I, I think just have to um, just be firm about it and uh, just, just stand strong, la. Yeah. So um for, for example, like um my kids, right, they know that um I have full access of their uh device. Full so access. I told them, right? Full that means it's like I told them that you are living under my roof right now. Uh and I and your device actually belongs to me because I'm the one who gave you the device. So at any point, right, I want to take it back or any point I want to check your device, uh it is my prerogative. Wow. Yeah. So that it's something harsh. that we make it, yeah, we, we make it very clear from the beginning because yes, um, yes. I think like um, it's very scary now, you know, like there are a lot of different things happening on the web, you know, like, uh, of course, you know, like um, we do talk to them about like um, how to keep themselves safe online and things like that. Uh, but I just want to make it very clear from the beginning that anytime we want to check their messages, anytime we want to do all of these things, please don't tell me about privacy. Because, uh, uh, yes, because uh, I, I mean, uh, again, this, this worked for us. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it worked for everybody, yes, yes. but I think this was something that um, we, we wanted to make sure because uh, we are just afraid, you know, like if we don't have this kind of rules, then in future, you know, some of the, the things happen and we, we are also not sure what is happening. So maybe this, this is helpful for um, parents with very young kids la, to just set that expectation from the very beginning so they know that um, in, the how, in our household, this is how it works. And even when next time, you know, when they grow up a bit older and they mix with their friends and their friends say, oh, you know why your parents are like that? But they already know that this is just how it works. Mm. So th- yeah, I mean, of course, I don't go around like, you know, like checking their phone all the time, like, honestly, but it's just an expectation that um, I want them to know that uh, and when it comes down to it, right, uh, your device belongs to me. So, yeah. Wow, this is, uh, I think, and then what I got out from here is setting very clear rules right from, right from the start. Yes. And yes. it would be good to do it, especially when they are younger. Yes, yes, yes. that's right. Does, does the checking of the rules, uh, it also uh, sp- spill over to like Facebook or Instagram? And that email? Uh, it, yep. Yep, it does, it does. So um, actually as much as possible, like um, I, I'm not very for my kids to be on social media. So I mean, Coram now he's 14. I mean, he does have an Instagram, he does have a Facebook, but I mean, for his nature, he actually doesn't use much of it. <laughs> I mean, but but he has it. Lah. For Kara, I feel she's a bit too young. So uh, she doesn't, she doesn't have Instagram, she doesn't have Facebook. And I, I think I'm also very mindful because um, I feel that for girls, right, um, they are very sensitive, especially, you know, like growing up at this age and their self-esteem, it's also, um, it's, they're still building up on it. And I think one of the challenging things about things like Instagram and Facebook, right, is really about that whole like thing. Mm-hmm. You know, whether they get likes, you know, whether, you know, they get shares or whether they get engagement. And I think like if they don't, they might feel that, oh, you know, I'm not worthy, you know, like why my friends get so many likes, I don't. So mm-hmm. I, I'm quite uh, mindful about that. And um, I, I, I'm i not comfortable yet la, to, to uh, actually allow her to have her own social media accounts. I mean, she has friends who have it, um, but she has not like very... Um, she has not requested to to have it. La. So I, I think also, uh, I think very thankful for that. You know, I don't need to deal with like that request yet. But I, I guess at some point we'll get there. And that's why during this time, I also want to build up her self-confidence, build up her self-esteem so that she will be able to deal with this, you know, when, when she get there. La. 
what what will you say to her if today is a day that she she comes back and asks mommy, can I set up my own personal Instagram account? What what will you say to her? Um, I will ask her why lor. Yeah. So so I I want her to uh share with me like why does she want it. And 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 get her to ask at least six times. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're getting it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So so yeah so so usually like uh I I would say uh why you know then she'll tell me then I would say I'll think about it, and then you know she I will see if she comes back there are things that she doesn't come back with so if she doesn't come back with that means she doesn't want it that much anyways you know so it's just like a phase but there are certain things that she is very uh persistent on then I let her ask six times uh. And then, like, uh, then on the way, I will, I will, uh, you know, like, uh, throw her questions. I'll get her to work on certain things, uh, okay. and then to see if she she will still come back with it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be quite tough to 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 get anything from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The the thing is, right? I I feel it's great to uh, yes. it's great for sales training because <laughs> even when I train my sales team, it's like I say you need to ask at least six times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Wow, this is this is really good for 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 family and and business as well. So <laughs> and use for both sides. Yes. Yeah. Just now, and I heard about you saying that, or and you do talk talk about um the re- requirements of their future spouses. Yes, so yes. What 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 are the kind of um key key elements you are, and you look for in their future spouses? Um, I I would say it's it's very similar to you know what I teach my singers as well yeah because I I think you know like we are all wired to be attracted to certain things to looks yeah. <laughs> yes like to looks to like I I mean what we call like um superficial criteria lah you know so like uh, looks might be one of it for girls you know like maybe height you know looking for someone who is like taller than them you know like a certain height might be one of it so so we. We are wired to look for these things. Sometimes we don't even understand why are we looking for these things because this is just basically things that trigger attraction. Yeah. So I, I think just from a young age, like I just want to help them to understand that we should not be ruled by our biological needs. Mm. Yeah. So to, so to really understand that, okay, uh, why you are looking for these certain things is not because uh, this would be an uh, important criteria for you to have a fulfilling and happy marriage. You know, it's just that because your biological tell you that this is what you should look for. Yeah. So, um, like, I mean, even when it comes to uh, matching, you know, we, in our company, we always always match on uh, values. So we feel that values is the most important when it comes to having a long-lasting and happy marriage. La. So I think that's also what I'm trying to impress upon my children at a young age. La, that at the end of the day, you know, a lot of the other things is good to have, it's bonuses, but mm-hmm. ultimately you need to look for people who um, have similar values uh, as you. When, when, when you talk about uh, values, what are some of the examples of good good values that you treasure? Mm, okay, so uh, for us, I mean, uh, we are Christians. So definitely, uh, we would prefer like uh, their spouse to have Christian values as well because I think it's, it's just much easier. Okay. Um, like uh, strong family values, like um, strong work ethic values, you know, like um, I would say uh, personal growth. Yeah, so so these are things that we feel uh, would be able to uh, help them bring them far in life. Like, I mean, in fact, for Corum right now, one of the things that I'm working with him on is not so much about uh, what he's learning, but it's really about his appetite to want to learn. Yeah, so um, this is something that um, I feel is very important because uh, what we don't know, right, is not important because what we don't know, we can always learn. Mm. But mm. the important thing is to want to learn and knowing how to learn. Mm. So th- this is something that, uh, you know, I am uh, working with him right now on, la, you know, so it's like, what are all the different ways to learn? You know, like, is it through reading books? Is it through like, you know, like searching on the computer? Is it like learning from other people? Is it going on a course? Like really um, having that curiosity to want to learn new things and just keeping, um, just never resting on our laurels or just um, never just uh, wanting to uh, be a status quo. So that's, that's something that uh, I, I want to um, really uh, impress upon him because I think uh, the challenge sometimes with the school system is, is very rigid and 
certain things are very boring. So sometimes, you know, like my kids, they always come back, they say, school is so boring, you know, like um, everything is so boring. I am not interested. So it, it's fine, you know, I, and, and I, I don't scold them about that. I'm like, fine, you know, it's boring, it's fine. But um, other than school, right, you have so many more hours in your life a day. What are you doing with those hours? So for example, Coram, he is uh, doing Duolingo. He's learning new languages. Wow. Yeah, he, he's very into languages. So I think right now he's learning Dutch and learning Greek and, and whatever not. Lah. And, and he's learning Chinese as well because uh, he has been exempted from Chinese, but um, he's still learning it, uh, you know, for, for his own development. Um, for Kara, you know, she's very interested in like um, drawing, you know, like so I, I let her download all the apps to uh, do uh, uh, animation, you know. Um, yeah, so, so, so she spends her time on that. She looked at YouTube videos on how to draw better, you know, like uh, on how to uh, so she, she self learn like doing all the animation is all self learn so that that's what I want to focus on because you know I don't want them to hate learning because mm. I think that is the scary thing like I want them to realize that learning is fun you know like uh learning is a lifelong journey so actually I was very very happy uh one day I think sometime maybe two weeks ago I was having this conversation with uh Coram and then we were just saying that uh what he was saying what is mummy obsessed with. And um, I mean, he talked about a lot of different things. He said, oh, mommy is obsessed with the business, you know, like things like that. But one of the things he talked about is mommy is obsessed with learning. Wow. And I was so happy when I heard that. Then I said, oh, what, why do you say that? What do you mean by that? Because, you know, I, I told him recently that uh, I'm going to be applying uh, for a psychology course. And then wow. he was like, wow, you know, like, mommy, you're at 40 this year and you are still looking to go back to school. So, um, so this is uh, the values that I, I think is very important. And uh, similarly, I think if they grow up this way, you know, we want them to find spouses that have similar values, you know, someone who is always passionate about uh, growing and learning. Oh, wow. thanks. Thanks for sharing so, so much in the past one hour because I got a lot from out of it, from what you shared. And I think I'm going to do some re revamping <laughs> to my to my family uh stuff <laughs> yes <laughs> thanks so much it's, um okay so now um i and i know that you may have something on later yeah so yes. let's keep it to the time um yes. okay so i know that you shared so much stuff and it's not just mm -hmm. the surface but also at one 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 level down so mm -hmm. what is one tip that you think that parents uh, can take away and start to implement right now Okay, so I, I think, you know, I'll go back to one of the things that I've said earlier, which is really start small. So okay. I think, you know, one of the things that I would love for parents to uh, implement right now is really just, you know, today take out like maybe just 10 minutes, 20 minutes to have a think about what you want in the future. Spouse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So what, what do you want for your children in the future? It could be different things. The type of spouse that they, you want them to have, the type of values that they want them to have. And, you know, um, just work backwards, you know, and uh, just think what, in order for that to happen, right? What is the one small thing that would help you to move towards that outcome? So it could be, it could even be as simple as like, you know, spending five minutes a day, just listening 100% to your mm -hmm. child with no judgment, and no interruption. Mm. Because I think a lot of times, right, we think we spend time with our children, but maybe in their mind, we are not. In their mind, right, they are just thinking that, ah, there she goes again, asking me to do homework. Uh -huh. You know, there she goes again, nagging at me. You know, so it's like, we think we are spending time, but maybe in their mind, we are not. So mm. I think, you know, a lot of times, kids, they just want us to just listen to them 100% mm. with no judgment, with no interruptions. You know, sometimes our questions can also be judgments, you know. Like we we think we are asking because we are curious, but actually we are asking to make a point. So we, we need to be very aware of that. This is also something I learned recently and I realized that, oh yeah, ho. sometimes yeah. I ask questions not because I'm curious. Like, I'm trying to make a point by asking a question. You, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. It's like a reverse way of, of, of yes. a point. <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. So, so I think, you know, like for kids, um, like just giving them that time to just listen to them. No judgment, no devices. Because sometimes uh, we listen to them, we are watching TV, la, we are playing with our phone. La. They, they also can observe all of these things. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, like just having that structure, asking a um, um, fixed type of question every day, you know, like instead of asking like, how's your day? You know, like saying like, okay, so uh, what happened today that made you really happy? You know, just, just mm. every day, just keep asking it. Like, you just develop, you know, that bond, like just find out new things about the child. And I think that would help, you know, in the bigger scheme of things. Wow. 
it's, it's such a nice summary. Yes, I'm going to take down all this uh, and start to use right now. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Okay, and I have one more last question that I always ask my guests. And because you know, you yes. know that this is a Facebook group we, where we teach parents how to teach their children math at home. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And PSOE is coming soon, so you can feel the anxiety of our, our 12 years old. Huh? Yeah. Yes. So right now, um, if I may invite you to walk down the memory lane. Yes. Your younger self, yeah? So yes. And then as you walk, you saw the 12-year-old Violet. Yes. Yeah? And she's so close to you that you can almost touch her and she's looking at you in the eyes. Yeah. What will you tell her? What will the older self tell the younger self? <laughs> um, actually, what I'll say to my younger self is don't grow up so fast. Uh, really enjoy your childhood. Like, um, just savor every minute of it. Lah. It's like, mm. um, yeah, because, you know, like there, there's just so many different things that happen when you, you grow older. There's so much responsibility. So I would say just, just enjoy that growing up journey. Like, don't, don't put so much uh, stress or uh, expectations on yourself. Everything else you want to tell her? Um, I also tell her that, um, you know, a lot of these worries that you have right now, um, that, you know, whether, uh, you know, if this happened, uh, is that going to affect your life? In fact, um, it's just a very small part of your life. Like, the truth is nobody's going to ask you what your PSLE score is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yes, yeah. yes. All right, but um, thanks so much for your time, and I really uh want to thank you because I know that yeah, uh, it's so hard to catch you. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I mean, thanks, thanks, John, for for having me. I mean, I really enjoyed our conversation, and I mean, uh, really kudos for doing this uh great uh show, you know, to help uh the parents to to I mean up their game like, up their parenting game. Yep. Yes, yes, and 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 it's a it's a must to up our game now because nowadays our kids and us are at home most of the time. Yes, yes, yes. Keep ourselves sane. Uh. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, John. Okay, thanks, friends, uh, thank, thanks, friends, friends, for watching this. Uh, so uh, please don't go off first. Uh, I'll just stop the Facebook feed and then uh, I'll want to get some feedback from you, okay? Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks, friends. Bye bye. Have a good day, yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. And smile always. <laughs>